Hi, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to do a quick review of joins in an access query. So I'm going to jump over and create a query in design view. And I'm going to bring in two tables. I will bring in my supervisors table and my jobs log table. And these tables are related to each other. Database tools, relationships. Tables that are already related to each other will automatically have that join line and by default it's going to be an inner join. Inner joins are limiting and so the advice I often give students is don't include tables in a query if you really don't want them to be part of your query because it'll it'll affect your results. So what I'll do here is I'll bring in the supervisor ID first name and last name of my supervisors and I'll bring in the job ID from the jobs log table. There we go and I'm going to bring in my totals row and I'll do a count of the job ID. So basically this is going to tell me how many various, how many different jobs an employee that was a supervisor, because they're in my supervisors table, worked. So if I do a quick run right now, keep in mind this by the way is an inner join. If I run this I'm going to have 75 results and so we're really clear let me sort this smallest to largest by count here and so we can see that every supervisor listed every employee listed all 75 of them worked at least one job okay if I go back to design view in fact let me put my sort ascending in here now I'm going to change this because I've actually got more than 75 supervisors. Is it actually 77? There's a total of, so there's two that weren't in that list. Now I'm going to put the tip of my arrow on this join line. I'm going to right click and go to join properties. And I'm going to change this to an outer join. And I want to include all records from my supervisors. Okay, let's read the first part of that sentence. That'll make it the most clear. Include all records from supervisors. And I'm going to click OK. I'm going to rerun this query and you'll notice now I get 77 results. I've got two employees added that were not there before and they weren't included before because an inner join looks for a combination of results between the two tables. This outer join is going to get all of my employees, all of my supervisors, even if they didn't have some reference in the jobs log table. So Joseph Green and Haley Nichols have a zero job count, which means if I were to go to my jobs log table, those two employee IDs would not be anywhere in there. They haven't performed any jobs. So the outer join gives me greater results by, in this example, getting all of my supervisors involved. Now to emphasize the other outer join, I'm going to go ahead and take away my totals row. Let's see what we've got here. First I'll go to my join properties and I'll go back to an inner join. So I'm just putting the tip of the arrow on the join line, right click, join properties. Okay. And let me go ahead and run this and let's see what we get. I'm not doing a count this time so I'm going to get a lot more records. So I've got 590 records and basically employees will be listed multiple times compared to the unique job IDs. So there's 590 combinations of jobs and supervisors. There's actually more jobs than this, but this is just with supervisor level employees. Now let's change this join property to an outer join, include all records from supervisors. It's not going to be that much more. And we get 592. We get our two additionals. Remember uh, Joseph Green and Haley Nichols, they didn't perform any jobs, so now they're listed also in this one outer join. So that's 592 records. Now let's change this. Join properties, I'm going to change it to an outer join that includes all records from the jobs log table. So all records from the jobs log table. The jobs log table is actually much bigger than what you might think. Let me just open it up over here and there's 2200 records, there's 2200 records in the jobs log table and the reason we're getting such a reduced amount, 590 or 592 um, actually 590, those are only the jobs that have been performed by supervisor level employees because I'm using my supervisors table so keep in mind there's 2200 jobs recorded in our jobs log table now that I've got this outer join to show all records from the jobs log table let me run this one 
and I'm getting 2200 results. So this query is a lot different. I'm getting all the results from my jobs log table, but notice all of these gaps in here. And that's because most of the jobs performed in the jobs log table um, were completed by regular employees, not supervisor level employees. So that's just a little bit of variation in how you use joins. There's inner joins and then two variations of outer join depending on the table involved. Now this can certainly get a lot more complicated in that you can create queries that use a certain level of outer join and then you can create a query on that query. So it gets a little bit more involved in something you might see in a, in a, in a bigger database theory class or an SQL course. So there's the basics of joins. Have fun.